everything in infrastructure uh, is uh, it takes time. So when we talk about doing things quickly, uh, this isn't something that happens, you know, next week or or even this year. But we have to start to get there. The LIAG uh, project is really quite ambitious. It's uh, targeting seven gigawatts of renewable energy uh, by 2032, and then another seven, so really 14 gigawatts to get through their 2037, uh, I think it is, uh, target to have all the coal turned off. But there is a transition that's going to have to take place. You have to have technologies that can be built uh, at massive scale that are not uh, reliant on some of the core uh, critical minerals or uh, uh, you know uh, uh, conflict minerals that are out there. And one of the things we really like about our iron flow technology is iron is one of the most abundant uh, resources we have on earth. So iron, salt, and water is a pretty good place to start if you need to go fast and you need to go big. Eric, there are a ton of subsidies across Europe for this very technology. This type of thing is exactly what the Europeans want to encourage. How easy, though, is it to do business in Europe at the moment, thanks to green transition ambitions? Well, I think there's still a little work to do there. We've been uh, fortunate on this project to have uh, support of a group group called the Energy Resiliency Leadership Group, which is a, a kind of pan-European group of uh, policy leaders, governments, large corporates, and innovative technology companies like ESS. We're really trying to block some of those barriers to do it. There's been a lot of talk about the Inflation Reduction Act in the U.S., and is that in conflict, or does that create competition with Europe? I think this project really demonstrates there's a great opportunity for cooperation but we do need to find a way to cut through the red tape and move faster because there's a lot of money talked about, but the process and the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the paperwork and the red tape it takes to get through that uh, can uh, slow us down uh, with time we frankly don't have. Um, Eric, you've, you've preceded my question with part of the answer. Um, why Germany and not in the States, given IRA? Well, there's a, quite a bit going on in the States, so I don't think it's an either or. Uh, Climate is a global issue, so we need to do it uh, in uh, the U.S., we need to do it in Europe, we need to do it in Asia, Australia, South America, Africa, you name it. Uh, this is a global thing, uh, and given the scale of the transition that has to take place, we're going to have to do it simultaneously. We can't uh, do this serially and go uh, say, we'll do the U.S. for the next decade and then come over to Europe. We have to do them all, and we have to do them all at the same time. Eric, as we talk about ecosystems and battery ecosystems in Europe, how far along are we in that journey at this point? Well, I think it's uh, there's a lot of excitement. We're here in Munich uh, today. There's a big conference that's happening, uh, has been happening all week. It wraps today. And the amount of uh, energy, there's, I think, 90,000 people here uh, talking about it. So there's a, an immense amount of activity. It, uh, it needs to get focused. And we need to get on with doing it, as you've alluded to, at, at scale. And we need to do it at scale uh, that is, uh, that is uh, at a pace that we're not moving at today. If you look at the LIAG project, which is a huge project, it's a very ambitious project, uh, our back of the envelope calculations say that we need to do 50 of these LIAG scale projects over the course of the next 15 or 20 years uh, to stay on track with the decarbonization goals that have been set. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.